Sticky Trifle Podcast. Welcome to the Sticky Trifle Podcast. And welcome, and we're well in to the start of July, and holidays should be appearing for some of us. Only time for now onwards, Abdi should be here in chill out time. Sun, sea, sand, I'm sure there's other rest, but I can't mind if it is. Uh, anyway, today we're visiting Crimmand for the first time and my guest kens a lot about Crimmand because he's had such a fascination with birds over the years. <laughs> um, and also it's his eighth appearance, so you'll can far more on about hopefully. One of my favourite type of dogs, a beagle. And every dog I see, I don't care about Ewan's, but I always want to give him a clap. Is it just me? <laughs> it's maybe just me. Sticky Trifle Podcast. And uh, welcome, welcome to Sticky Trifle Podcast number 42. Uh, we've actually flied out of the way to Spain because <laughs> the restrictions is better. And uh, we us, he's here once again, Marvin Rose. That's me. How are you doing? Um, getting by, I suppose. I bet. It's, it's a beautiful day today. We've Absolutely packed a lovely. fucking day for summer. Um, thanks for being here again. Yeah, brother. Now well. listen, we've you can't how it goes in a podcast. Right. I wouldn't like you to be here uh, with suit Ooh. and a little uh, drink or two with us. Right. And you've got in some books here which we're going to be speaking about. Yes, that's suit. right. I right. will be. Uh, right. Let's let's open a beer now. Today, this is I'm giving you one of my favourites, Marvin. This is Ringwood Brewery. Ringwood. Ringwood Brewery. Brewery. And um, these beers. I reckon I just tasted them and I, I liked them. This is like Razor Back. Became one of my favourites. So Ringwood Brewery Razor Back. Um, you can see. Cheers. Cheers, Errol. Good health. Mmm. Now what's a beer? That's what I like. What do you think? That is really first class. Tell you, tell you. See, so uh, we're coming in wrong today. No, nope, coming uh, wrong. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get nothing right between us. It's a craft ale, so uh, right, great to see you again. We're in July. Um, now, you've got a birthday coming up. In just coming up, I just in a, in, a, in a couple of weeks' time. I in my seventy-sixth birthday. Seventy-six in wow. July. And how how how's your body feeling? Terrible. Oh, well, you've been serious though. I'm serious. I am worn out. I'm I'm on, I'm, on, I'm officially on all money. So like the joints is going. Joints are stiff and. And fit is it? So, right. Just all age. As an example, what time do you get up in the morning? Sometimes five o'clock, sometimes six, six o'clock. It depends. And is that because of the, the, the pain or is it me or not? No, it's just. Uh, I just get up. It's mm -hmm. not walking up and I can't lie and sleep. So I just get up and get get going. Have you got pain relief? No, I didn't talk. I didn't, I didn't like talking pills. Mm -hmm. Unless I have to, unless I'm really pushed, can force to. Mm -hmm. I will talk. Them. But otherwise, I like to keep a off of medicines if I, if I can. Aye, oh, right. So you're quite a natural person. We, I, I'm the same. See, if I get a call, I try and buy the waffle, I think. That's right. Apart from a lame sip or something like that. That's right, aye. That's right. Uh, anyway, where, far, far are we at? We're at the Lochestrath Beg, which is out of St. Cremond. Have and you been here before? I've been here before, but a long time ago. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge expanse of ground. I don't know how many acres it would cover, but there's water all the way which you would expect in a loch, 
and there's obviously a lot of birds. How many? How many types? About 250 by the 250 different species of birds that the RSPB says. Mm -hmm. Okay. The loch has been here for hundreds of years, and it changed its course in 1720 due, due to a storm, and it changed the, the course of the loch a bit. Eh? But it's, it's still here, like I said, and a lot of the migratory birds are near here because they're a up north somewhere, Iceland, so Green, it's Greenland. Winter time they come back. Winter time they'll come, they'll come back with their with their youngsters, and the youngsters will be mature and able to fly. And it ducks them up. Depends on what, what, what country they're coming from, but it's generally Iceland and Greenland areas. It ducks them about 17 hours to fly non-stop. Non-stop. Fay up there doing to the Loch Ness big, and then there's somebody standing with a shotgun and blasting them with the sky. You can. Which I don't uh, think it's very fair myself, but that's, that's just that's just how I feel. Well, about. and I see nobody doing that when you get off a flight. <laughs> Well, nobody pulling the guns and doing that to humans, so it's kind of a shame right. in a way. So, so um, but, but you, you're still, still a big bird lover. I like, I like animals of, 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 of the uh, kinds. You can right. they're, they're just birds, but obviously the birds, the Loch Ness Bay is, is famous for birds again. Yep. Twenty percent of the world's population of pink-footed goose come here in the winter time. Twenty percent of them. I think that's something far we both here. About in common, see nature and animals. Mm -hmm. We we both have a passion about that. Yes, I have. I, it's yes, it's yes. like definitely right. Animals and nature together. It's just a beautiful it's, thing. It's, it's yeah. a beautiful thing, as you said, and um, and I think it's half important again. Now, um, since since we're here, you've got you've got a couple of books here now. Oh, aye. Well, you that's tell a us about those books because you, well, you tell the, me you, the, the bathe, bathe those books that you've got in your hand. It was two for seven pound, by the way. Aye. You got a bag. But I didn't buy it. <laughs> it you didn't do it. I got it for an old lady, <laughs> and she took it doing uh, the Weatherspoons idea, and said, I, "I want to give you this book." And yesterday I was in Weatherspoons, and she came out along with this book here. She actually just bought for me. It's a, we've got a, and that's and that's about a dog. Judy. Judy and. and uh, and I can't the it's, doggy's name. I, it's I, I it's all about yet. time. I don't care if they can see it. Like right. So. Well, Bear that dogs won the Deccan Medal, which is the the uh, the, the animal equivalent of the Victoria Cross for for uh, bravery. For that dog, Judy, I read about her six months ago. Mm -hmm. But the, the black Labrador type dog there, I've no idea for that dog. I can't nothing about it until I read the book. And so, true story. True story about again. About a dog yes. it was in a war. No, in no war. Well, that in was in the war, yes. Was yes. The war, Sorry, that, that in was in the war, yes. And that scene... That scene I didn't care. Because I hadn't read it yet. Because I hadn't read it yet. I only, right. got, only got it yesterday. So why is that why you getting your free books? Because you can, I'm interested in wildlife. Aye. And, and, and dogs and stuff like that. Because I've spoken to her heaps of times. And uh, she's about the same sort of age group as myself. And fit, the, um, so she likes you? No, oh, she's a fine, she's a fine woman, Ken. And uh, uh, here's one quote. I've always loved this quote. You never judge a book by its cover, mm -hmm. because as soon as you open it, you might get a shock and you go, "Oh wow, that's never exact, expected." Exactly right. And there's a lot of people like that in life. You yes. kind of you make yeah. presumptions, and then you get and meet a person. That's right. You think, wait a minute, they're not the person I expected to, right. to be. Uh, to be. Well, she's not the person I expected to be either. She's a really, really nice critter, like. It was good to work again and buy the book and tuck it, tuck it down to me. And I, I, I didn't expect to get out there. I hadn't seen her for, for months because of the because of the log doing that. And we're speaking, let's say, this book here, okay? How right. long will this take you to read this book if you are going to read it? Well, it 320 pages. I don't can really. I'll maybe read some of it and fall asleep, see for a bit of can I, 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 I can't answer that question. <laughs> right, okay. But I'm going to tell you a story, and, and it's a true story. Oh, I love the stories. About a dog. Is it true? true? And this is true. Right, it's a true story. And and this and the and the uh, fit fit war was it? It was the first world war, definitely the first world war. There was some uh, soldiers out practicing their maneuvers and stuff somewhere or other in America, mm -hmm. and a dog bef befriended them, and the dog was like a cross between a pit bull terrier and a Boston terrier, and they nicknamed the dog. The dog sort of latched onto all these guys. And 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 the car and the car the dog Stubby, 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 and he went on to be to be famous. During the war, he was smuggled aboard a ship by the soldiers because they didn't want to leave him. He took up to France, halfway across the Channel. The general father he was found out there was a dog on board, 
and he um, came down and, and had a right carry on about it, mm -hmm. about this dog being in the boat. And the dog barked at him, and it's the only, only, only person or, or animal that's ever spoken back to him. Oh. And he was gobsmacked by this, because the dog spoke, spoke back to him. Oh, right, yeah. okay. So the dog was, uh, was out in the open, and nobody cared about it. It went to France with a boy that, that, that sort of owned the dog, I, I, so to speak. <laughs> And uh, during the war, it served it served in seventeen different battles. It was it was injured. It used to sniff out mustard gas. It had a a, a mask and I made, made for, for it, it made for the dog. I right? and uh, the dog become well kent and uh, he even understood uh, or, or kent. It was Germans when they spoke German. <laughs> and, and the dog once or twice did latch onto a couple of the Germans and held them down by tucking their backside Jeez. in this move and hanging on to it. <laughs> so, and, uh, so, so this dog, it was actually, it was saving folk for getting killed? Yes. Sniffing out things like mustard gas? Sniffing out stuff like, like mustard gas. He was saving soldiers Aye. for getting killed. So the dog, the dog was promoted to Sergeant Stubby, which was a rank higher than the guy that ended him, called Conroy. And <laughs> <laughs> the dog came back to America. He got he got his eyes sear bits and stuff healed up. A bit like yourself. Aye, <laughs> and I I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he came back to America, and um, he was he 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 was asked to get into the White House, and he visited three different presidents, and he's and he's in his lifespan. So stubby, well known. Well known dog. He was. Uh, he used to lead the uh, platoon of soldiers mm -hmm. doing the street. He would be in front, True. Lead, leading them doing the street. And he's got. He's got. He's got the most decorated dog ever to come to America. The, so, most, the most decorated dog. And so this is kind of stories you kind of really. I love stuff like that. Hi. I love reading stuff. Especially like that. if it's because it's, it's true. Because it's true. true. It's not somebody mucking something up. Uh -huh. It's. It actually happened. You can. Only why. He died in 1926, age 10, lying beside his the boy that uh, the boy that sort of sort of ended him. You can, mm -hmm. you can, yep. and, uh, and that was that was stubby. Then he was seen and stuffed and put into a museum. You can, <laughs> and um, he's still there as far as I'm aware. And you're going to visit him soon. Well. There's no panic to do it, he's dead. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, here, since you're speaking about uh, getting stuffed and death and stuff, we're not wanting to actually go there, right? You mm -hmm. know why, but you're, right, you're basically 76. Aye. Do you always. actually worry about um, something you've achieved in your life? Aye. Is there, have you got regrets? Yes. But, many, many which is them. strange because I look at it and I think Marvin's he's led his life and he's happy and content but no. so a lot of things a lot of places I'd like to have seen uh, a lot of different places in the world that I, that I haven't seen I've seen quite a lot why? why? because of money? because because of a lot of reasons did you run out of money? no well I did eventually because my I, I with the second wife I, <laughs> it was pretty hard mm -hmm. but uh, no, I've been divorced twice, like I said, like I've said before in this podcast. Have you regrets about both of that marriage? Is that what I mean? Or, because you was in love, was you? Was I? Well, I didn't care, I'm asking you, but I presume you, before you married somebody, oh, yeah, yeah. there must have been something you must would have been something really, like really love him. I really, oh, or am I wrong saying that? No, maybe I was a bit over ambitious to think to think as far as that, like, you know? Aye, okay. <laughs> so hold on, from, did you propose in both occasions? You can something. I have a good memory, but I can't have mind that. <laughs> was you maybe, drunk? It's maybe because I didn't want to mind it. It's maybe drinking beer, and you went, oh, Kenneth, I really love you. <laughs> it maybe was, I can't have mind. Oh, you okay. And I so may go to try and mind. So if we're getting the regrets, for kind of things in? You're not speaking about marriages as regrets? Eh, uh, well, some parts of it was good, and some parts of it was, wasn't so good. Huh? And uh, Was you a good husband? Probably, no. <laughs> well, that doesn't help Marvin, I. So, like, see, to be a good husband, then, right? For, for, um, for the class is like, for your, for your marriage is go was happening. Was it like, like a companionship element? Was you as connected? In both your, can I mean, was there a real, like, connection between you? No, I've been a selfish, selfish person all my life, and I'm not going to change now. 
Again, and that's nothing to be proud of. And so, it's okay, right. The truth. So let's, when, when you had maybe the odd argument we when you was in us marriages, was there times after what you thought, Kenneth, I should have handled that different? Or? Probably was. I never gave it a lot of thought. Because uh-huh. I was I being more interested in myself. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so, like, but I, I presume you've got enough sense to be wanting to keep them happy and all, was you? Or no? Was I? <laughs> I never even thought about it. Like, aye. That's the truth. I'm just trying to work a suit for if it happened with no, managers, so. No, it's, it's Or maybe it just wasn't a proper chemistry and connection going on. Maybe. I, I really um, I've never ever discussed it and and I've shown and because they're both a of me, you know uh-huh. I've got no interest in finding out again. I mean Because it's just like right, ki- see if I see there's a lot of married couples and folk in different aye. relationships. That's right. It, and you never care if it goes on behind the scenes, or if no. they're really at connected to each other. And you think, are they just with them? Because well, there's probably a lot. Of, there's probably a lot. Of, a lot of selfish folk like myself mm-hmm. that maybe you wouldn't admit, but I've just admitted it. But what are each of us as individuals? Can I mean Aye. each of us has like a root in life that we want to be happy in? Yes. Can and maybe a other person that folk bide we or uh, get married to. Sometimes it's not the right person. That's right. Um, Could easy be. Love is a very tricky thing, you know, because do you, I don't know, Ken, about you, but I've always thought, Ken, everybody can be saying they're in love with each other, but you never actually care what's going on in that other person's mind. Mm-hmm. As much as you hear it. You maybe would like to Ken. Aye. And, like, things like, right, affairs. Right, can we ask about an affair? Aye. Have you ever had an affair? Oh, well, I've kent, uh, kent one or two ladies, but I don't why over the years. And that's as much as I'm going so, to say about it. So, you're not going to tell me if he's unfaithful or not? I, I never said that. That was no. you said that. <laughs> have, like I said, have you seen, like, uh, Holyoaks? Have you seen Holyoaks in you East Enders, Coronation Street? Oh, well, I've heard of that, but that I never, look, I never always, look at any kind of stuff like that. There's always somebody in a fair, and I think... I, I'm not interested must, in stuff like that. It must see. happen in real life. Yeah. But, uh, if I'm being honest, I've... Uh, I'm, go- I'm going to say this. I had an affair once. Aye. But, however... Is it class as a fair if I was single? I don't know, Ken. The you person you want to classify it the way you want to the way you the way you want them. Aye. The other person was in a relationship, but uh, we liked each other, and uh, it happened a few months, and then kind of was wise enough to end it. Aye. Because I thought I didn't know what to be in a triangle. It kind of got very right. complicated, right. and. Um, I just so like with you, you're not going to tell me any more. Nah, I've got no much interest. In, I'm much more interested in things we're speaking about here today with the locust of Beg or, oh. or we'll, we'll point out something across here is a, a, a Crummond aerodrome. Mm-hmm. And I can mind going out there when I was a young loon with my father, and I was only maybe six year old, seven year old, and the war had obviously finished, and they were using it as a race truck. Because there was still fairly well tarred strips of land out there, again with the uh, runways. And there was a guy come up here, and he's world famous, and he had his very first race in Crimmond race truck. Mm-hmm. And his name was Jim Clark for the border. Jim Clark. He's world famous. Okay. He was a Formula One champion in 1963, 1965, and he was also the. Uh, the winner of the Indianapolis race, because it's, it's called a brickyard as a nickname, and he won it. Mm-hmm. And then he was killed on the, I think it was the 7th of April 1968 in Hockenheim, and he was racing out there. And his car, I think I think it developed a puncture, I'm near 100% sure, and he collided with a tree and he was killed. And, and that's that when that's the safe thing. 32 year old. 32 year old. And he was reckoned to be. One of the most famous uh, uh, drivers of all time, you can. And it kind of shows you li- life's half unpredictable, is it? It is. On, can on, 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 on end time. Yes, it's gone. It's gone. But it was strange that him, he came to this area for we are just now, mm-hmm. and had his first race in a in a in a, in a car. Got a, it was a German car, got a DKW, and that's for Jim Clark. His very very first race, and I can just mine. I think it was Jim Clark, but I was only a young boy at the time, I was six, seven year old. Mm-hmm. And I can mine the track out there, and I can mine these old Jaguar cars coming up 
hammer and doing that truck, you can. Uh -huh. At half a speed, I for, for that right. kind of cars in, in them days, you can. And I think that's that could have been. I use the word carefully. That could have been Jim Clark, mm -hmm. you can. And then he was sub subsequently killed, like I said, you can. So that bit's a danger every. The danger. Every the danger. driver takes from that. Danger of the truck, and that's from the from the safety measures in car racing come into its end. Again, there was no trees near the truck, for example, and stuff stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Again, there were runoff areas and stuff like that. For they could, if they lost control, they could can spin around the boot and, and get out of it. Again, mm -hmm. I, I, I relatively unscathed, again. Right. And, uh, and, that's, and that's where that started, again. And so, say if we're speaking about, like us, Jim Clark guy, down at 32, um, would it have been better for him just to not be driving and taking that risk? In fact, I mean, it'd still be, would have still been alone no, no, a lot longer. No, if. because he was the kind of guy that enjoyed it, the same as same, same, same as the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Dangerous sports, again. Right. And they enjoyed it. And they, and they loved to be, to be able to compete with other, with other folk. And, uh, and he did. He competed well, but he was killed, like I said. So, like, say you, right? You're, you're just coming up to 76. That's me, aye. And we're going back. We're going well back to, if you go back to like your childhood Aye. and being brought up, do, is there still, do you still think about your mum and dad and stuff like that? Oh, of course, why? Right. Why? Right. Oh, still comes in your head. Do, do, have you got more sentimental as you get all now? Do you start thinking about things more? Because like... Probably do, because when I was... You're out of time. When, I was, when I was a teenager, I was young and carefree, you can sort of thing. Okay. You didn't get one, one thing, th one th one thing much I thought, mm -hmm. but as you get all that, you mellow a bit, and and uh, I think you you think more about maybe people you can't or your parents or right. or, or whatever you can. So so fits life being a boot for you, Marvin. Fits uh, fits us journey being a boot. Uh, fits have fits have you really enjoyed? Fits have you got a new life? I didn't really find that a difficult question to answer. Can like uh, the happiness aspect? If like are you are you really happy? No, not particularly. Oh. Not particularly really happy, no. But there was times in your life you've yeah, been probably happy, Probably have been, no, I can't have been, have right. been happy, you can. And just the way it goes. So is, do you find it like, is, it, is, there a bit of, is there a bit of disappointment in certain things you wish you'd done better? No, I probably, I probably would be, I can. It's kind of sad hearing out. Aye, but it's just the way life is, I'm afraid. Aye. And the only, I always remember, that we've only got one life, so go for it and enjoy it. Because it's near, there's near, it's near trial run. Aye. This is reality. And so, <laughs> that's a thing. So <laughs> you've run out of time, or you tell me you've run out of time, or could you still, could you still somehow? I can't kind of hope I haven't run out of time. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is, it is kind of sad because, like, um, I just wonder how much thought, like every week, you kind of think, kind of. Sad. Well, like, I just think, I just think the time is. Right. Pass an arbitrary boy, and, it, and eventually you run out of time, mm -hmm. which is a, which is a fact, isn't it? And do you worry about that when that day comes? No, because it, it happens to everybody else. Right. Far do you actually think you go? See, right. Can I can. Let's just say I one day you just you're in bed or whatever you're doing, and it's a heart attack or whatever. It's 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 you're out like a light, and that's it. You don't know. There's no soul. You, uh, I don't care. Because a nice soul comes out of your nobody's, body. Nobody's ever convinced me, but it, but but somebody maybe could. Aye. Can't have any idea. But I just wondered how we feel about that kind of things. Can like if uh, you think there's life after me. death. Uh, I'm, I'm personally hoping there is. Oh, I suppose it would be a good idea, but 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 uh, but it's something we don't care. <laughs> and we'll never care. So I would rather concentrate on the things we do know. Aye. And that's what we're doing just now, for example. But so like the. There's never going to be an answer about after death, is there? As much as Abdi no, mentions that. No, I, I don't think there's going to be an answer. Can? Aye. That's, that's, my own, that's my own feelings. Like, it's again. just one of spiritual things in life that whatever happens, happens some to people, you after Some people believe a lot and stuff like that, other, other people do not. And where are you going to go? I mean, as in, when that day comes, where do you go? Where do you go? Where are you going to, where are you going to be buried at? I'm not, I'm going to be burnt. You're going to be cremated? Well, well, then does it matter? Well, it does matter because I, I want to come and visit you forever that is. Well, I want to be able to speak to you anyway. No, Even I'm not. always cremated or no. <laughs> right, but I might be one day when you're gone, you might come and visit me when I'm like sleeping in my bed and going. 
Okay. Hey, Errol, right. walking up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you might, you might be going, stick your trifle, stick your trifle. Stick your trifle. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, but you say, I'm not worried about it. And I'll say, yeah, far invented that name anyway. <laughs> far and comfy. It's a, it's a well known secret, only two persons can have the real truth behind that. I'll so. put the real truth behind sticky, sticky trifle. Sticky trifle. Mm -hmm. Aye. Right. And obviously, I'm never going to be told. I might tell you one day, Marvin. Oh, well. Maybe next time you're around. I'll look forward to that. Aye. So, uh, that, uh, do you find in our, um, do you find, I don't care about you, right, but uh, we've had a lot of rules over the last year and a half, different we rules have. restrictions. We have. Are you finding people awkward to deal with? Because I am. Aye, some people are, I suppose, but some people are always awkward and they're never happy about nothing in life. Like, you can't. And I can't when I got much to be happy about just now, but by this, carry on with. Aye. You can't hang here, you can't hang there, you can't do this, you can't do that again. Right. But uh, whether it'll ever come back to some semblance of normality, I don't again, I've no idea. But like, is, is there a lot of folk nowadays? It's, I'm starting to think there's a lot of selfish people uh, going about. And I'll give you an example. We just uh, we just passed a couple earlier here coming in a bit. Uh, they were sitting on the bench, they had their uh, right. cameras. Really nice couple, and it was just by chance. I says, "Hey, listen, do you mind if I take a little bit of footage of you?" And no. they was like, "No, perfect. You just want us to." That's right. Because they was just sitting there, looked really kind of romantic. I thought. That's right. But they, this struck my in, yeah, for you and I. Mm -hmm. They came across really nice people. That's right. And there was a kind of folk. As soon as you speak, you, and it was just a qu simple question. We was going, yeah, are we getting the right day in, day in here for coming here? And they they gave us really good that's advice. Right, they did, eh? And I'm then dead. they're saying, oh, yeah, it's okay. I take a take a photo here. Yeah. And I, I wish there was more folk like that. There's a lot well, of folk nowadays the, the, that didn't the, want to give you time because oh, they're, they're too, too busy. busy. Too busy. Life to, is too to, busy. To, to, to pass the time of day with you. And for talking to that kind of folk, it's too busy. Is it like? Well, I think they're pathetic. <laughs> But they're further going in life. That's oh. folk, it's so busy. Well, they're not giving a damn about nobody, are they, really? Aye. Can? They're only, giving, they're only concerned about themselves, can? And it's, much, it's worrying. Much, much the same as me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd be comments on it. <laughs> Aye. But, but I like it why, can us when we're, when we're, we're getting into this podcast, you always, you show up and we get real stories for you. Oh, aye, True aye. stories. Well, I like, I, I like stories and I like stories that are factual. Uh -huh. I've no time for this pie in the sky stuff that's something something that somebody's made up I have got no interest in it whatsoever a bit like your stories <laughs> my stories <laughs> oh, it's okay. but I, I I I like to get the facts or something and and tell other people if they're interested to hear it again uh -huh. and uh, I and I do that right and so I see you're off slate you're hoping for better things are you you want well, to make your best if it's if it's well, a heater you knew of course have you got a money to do it I'm, I hope so. Aye. I hope so, but that'll that'll, that'll come with time, and <laughs> <Aye, laughs> <right. laughs> time will tell. <laughs> but so, for you want a new a life new? Is it like right? See at nights. Aye. Do you want to be sitting at a TV at nine o'clock at night? No chance. No. Not interested in TVs. Right, no TV. I'm okay. not interested in them. What about that. music? Do you want music? I do like music, and I and I, and I, I play the radio quite a lot with music that I like. Aye. And uh, but but t television. I've got near just and I watch the news and stuff like that to see what's happening in the world. But uh, most of the stuff that's on there, I've got I've got no interest in it. In fact, I sit and look at it sometimes, and it, it's it's on for a bit of company, and I don't even care what I was watching. Again. How about food? Do you, do you enjoy food? Oh, I. My ex-wife used to used to be a really good cook, and uh, I miss her miss her cooking. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of other things about her, and then I miss. Right. Uh, what about Walking, you like walking. I like walking. Yeah. I okay. Right. So, is every day apart from the weather's really bad? Is every day a walking kind of? I like to walk somewhere. I, I love it. Aye. I just walk on anyway, Ken. So is it meeting people? It's, it's exercise and meeting on meeting people. Aye. Otherwise, if you're sitting in the house, you're getting crazy. I'm getting age. crazy just sitting here looking at four walls. That's not to me. There's not. There's not fun in that. You can. And the other thing, again, you do like. You still like, you know. A beer or two. Oh, I like a beer or two, aye. Oh, aye. It's part and of so life. It's, especially at your age, it's like, is it a therapy for him? I suppose it is. I, 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 never, I never even thought about it like that, but uh, I suppose it is. Huh. And uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy my beer, I always have enjoyed my beer. My father was the same, my former, and uh, his family was exactly the same as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope I'll be able to continue enjoying my beer. 
And so uh, the other thing, you, you've got a good circle enough, and you, if you if you can, if you're doing the pub and you hear hear beer, there's right, right. a few guys to speak up, aye, which is fine, because I'm sure they are in the same situation. Aye, companion, can, like can, a companionship. Some, a companionship to hear somebody to, to hear to hear a new style again. And so, what are you telling man basically about you? Is it I want to be seventy six? The is it like okay? There's things you've gotten regrets about. But is there still, are still little things you want to still achieve? Or are you too, are you past that stage far, you're going, no, I've nothing else I want to really do. Well, I, I would, I hope, I, I mean, I mean, nobody cares how long they're going to live, but uh, I hope I live a fail yet and uh, and can see some more things in the world, can't bad that way. Because uh -huh. there's a heap of stuff to see in the world. And so you will travel again? Well, I hope so. Aye. That's a plan. That's a plan, yep. Aye. So okay. we'll see if it, uh, if it bore us. Johnston says about that again. Aye. Inciden well, inciden incidentally, he was born on the 6th of June, 1964. 1964. 1964. Do you want to tell me you was born the same year? No, I was yeah. <laughs> I was born in 1945. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bit older than Boris. Aye. And I'm near, I'm near a great admirer of his haircut either. Aye, okay. But he's probably near a great, a great admirer of mine either. Can you, you've got a better haircut. Plus, you're, you're a housewife's favourite, if I'm hearing. A housewife's uh, favourite? Quite a few uh, older women. I think they're in their 70s that like you. <laughs> Why? Maybe, I don't know. Right, so, anyway, um, I'm glad you've came on. And before we go, is there anything else, Mayor, you can tell us about uh, the Locust Rathbeg well, before just, we go? It's just the, 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 the birds are the, main, are the main thing here. And uh, most of them are not here just now because they're breeding again. Aye. Or it depends on for the breed, obviously. Uh -huh. But the, the geese, for example, which comes here in the tens of thousands, like I've mentioned already, the pink footed goose, especially, and there's a grey log. There's, there's several other uh, breeds of geese. Uh -huh. but, the, but, the, but the grey log and the pink foot come here in a lot of big numbers, like uh, uh -huh. huge, vast uh -huh. numbers of them. And they're coming down for the, for the northern areas, getting Greenland and Iceland and I. Uh -huh. And further been nesting. Well, I will say, um, you've really made my day today, Marvin, because mm. uh, we mentioned this Locker Strathbeg, and we got a shockingly amazing day for it. <coughs> and uh, just <coughs> just to come out and walk here with you. It's fine. It's been a real pleasure. No, you can I've right. really enjoyed it. No. So have I I've enjoyed it's it. Near, yeah. can I, we've like spoken just now, and it's not even like a podcast for me. It's like I'm just having a, 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 a day out, we'll and a news and a catch up. We're just having a news and a catch up, boy. It's not as though the, you're, a, you're aware too much of the fact the camera's on you. <laughs> no. Because we're, listen, I've, well, I'm not really concerned about the camera. It doesn't bother me. Well, yeah. you can tell us more about your love life and your affairs. Well, <laughs> I may be off camera. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, okay. Yeah, thank you very much again, Marvin. Yeah, bother uh, that, Hope your birthday's going to go great. I'll maybe well, have to buy you a cake or something. No, I'm, I'm fat enough. Do you want a sticky trifle? I'm fat enough as it is. You can get a sticky trifle? No, I just want to come for the name Sticky Trifle Kempe. <laughs> Well, well, I'll tell you next time you're on. Okay, eh? do that. Right, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. All the best. And we'll Cheers. see you next time on a Sticky Trifle Sticky Podcast. Trifle. And the RSPB. Loch of Strathbeg is open for 9.30 till 5pm. Sticky Trifle podcast will return next week. And what a stunning location the Loch of Strathbeg is, especially when you see so much scenery and peacefulness with the birds. And well done, Marvin. You're now 76 on your eighth appearance. And if, if you send a drink, which I can he well be, let's just hope he bides a waffle of the birds. <laughs>
Sneaky Trifle Podcast.